In the workshop, a modified Southworth Engines 12-inch boiler feed pump built by Don English, and this is part 6. I need to partially dismantle the engine to get it ready for painting, and the first part to be removed is the steam chest cover. The nuts on the steam chest cover are all individually made, they are not commercial items. I have another steam pump that was made by Don English, and that also has the same arrangement with these fancy brass nuts on the covers. Like everything that Don English makes, this engine is really well made, with great attention to detail. Underneath these individually made brass nuts is a washer. So what I'm going to do is take them off now and put them in a plastic box. The first one came out complete with the stud, but the rest of them unscrewed just fine. And you'll notice from the stud that came out complete with the nut that it is a proper stud, not just a piece of commercial threaded studding. The two central brass nuts came out complete with the studs as well, because these two have to be shorter to accommodate the valve spindle. I really am getting quite excited in a very laid-back sort of a way. I'm looking forward to finishing the job and putting the pump to work, feeding water into my Castle Steam V6 boiler. The V6 boiler is a thing of great beauty, and if you haven't got one and you can afford one, then there's no excuse you need to buy one. Here's a shot of the other shortened stud, and this comes out as one unit complete with the stud itself, and now it's time to remove the steam chest cover. I'm using the blade of my scalpel for this, and as you can see the cover came away very easily. I'm using the same scalpel to scrape the washers off the top cover, and here is everything safely in my green plastic box. The next part of the job is to dismantle the water valve. Because of the exhaust outlet I have to remove this part of the valve, and then I can remove the body of the valve separately. I also showed this in a previous video. I need to key some of the parts for paint, so I'm using some 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper to roughen up the surface of this part of the water chest cover. The water chest cover has the same arrangement as the steam chest cover, these specially made brass nuts, with washers underneath them, the only difference being that these washers are made from steel, whereas the washers on the steam chest cylinder were made from brass. I don't need to remove the water chest cover, I just need to take off the brass nuts so I can paint it. Every one of these brass nuts unscrewed fine and left the studs in the holes. The larger brass bolts at the top control the travel of the valves. I don't need to remove these, I'm just going to slacken off the lock nuts so I don't paint them inadvertently. This is the water outlet manifold and now this can be unscrewed. As you can see here there's some water coming out of the water chest. And in this clip once again I'm using some 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper to key this water outlet fitting for the paint. These steel washers are a bit of a problem, they're quite difficult to get off, I can't scrape them off. When I turn the engine upside down they don't fall off. So what am I going to do? I know, I will apply some science. This is how I did it, using two telescopic magnets, like this. One dislodges the washer, then the other one removes it. These telescopic magnets are an essential tool for a workshop especially when you drop a whole tin of nuts and bolts on the floor. Steel nuts and bolts, that is. With all the steel washers safely in the green box, I'm taking this opportunity to clean up part of the casting using a small needle file, and I'm cleaning up the edge of the cover using some 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper as usual. It's time to remove the exhaust outlet flange that I made in the last episode and put that in the green box also. Here I'm just using a cloth to wipe off the surplus oil from the exhaust flange outlet. In this clip I'm working on the underside of the water chest, I've turned the engine upside down and I'm just taking this opportunity to tighten up the brass nuts on the studs. But I'm finding it difficult because of the physical size of the spanner, and as usual, and very frequently, I have to resort to these. A laser cut spanner from one of the very cheap sets from Blackgate's Engineering. These spanners will boldly go and reach parts where other spanners just will not. Since I bought these spanners, I don't know how I ever lived without them. They make the job easier, which is always a good thing. Now it's time to remove the main mounting brackets, and for this I'm using my small Barco adjustable spanner. Once the mounting brackets were off the engine, I refitted the nuts just so it didn't fall apart. I didn't bother fully tightening the nuts, they'll be perfectly fine like this. In this clip, I'm doing exactly the same at the other end of the engine. Now all of the parts have been removed, it's time to start the job. First of all, I'm cleaning up the top surface of the steam chest cover. For this job, I'm using different grades of wet or dry sandpaper with WD-40 as a lubricant. 
Now it's time to degrease all the parts, and I'm using panel wipe for this, which is like lighter fuel. So if you're a smoker, I don't recommend smoking near this stuff. A health and safety warning. Smoking can seriously damage your health, and holding your head over a tub of panel wipe when it's on fire would also seriously damage your health. The two mountings are now degreased, and I've also degreased the steam chest cover. Now for the rest of the engine. It's very important to remove every trace of grease before painting this engine. And I'm taking my time and getting into every nook and cranny. Look how much dirt and oil came off the engine. This is the water outlet. I'm going to paint the rough cast part and polish up the other bit. And here is the same part when I've cleaned it up and polished it. Because this is a gunmetal engine and I would like the paint to stick to it, I'm going to paint it initially with Phoenix Precision Paints Grey Single Pack Etch Primer. Painting the engine with this etch primer will be in the next episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.